Hi, Diane Martino here. Art and Soul, Creative Healing, and Creative Whales, right? Whales, Wellness, Healing, Ascension, Art, Love, Light, because love is good, Energy, Spirit, and Soul, Whales. And again, whales are just very magical, creative frequency animals. Um, they're their sound has a very, very powerful frequency. And um, and whales have been in my consciousness lately. So creative whales. So tonight I'm going to share, or today or this evening or whenever you watch this, I'm going to share another practice on breathing. I'll be um, promoting a course, a 12-week course on um, the ABCs of creative healing. So movement, meditation, so asanas, breath, and chakra activation, and frequency healing, the chakras. So A, B, C, asana, breath, and chakras. So this came to me um, a couple of months ago, and it was downloaded, and I'm still downloading different practices that work with different chakra colors chakra colors that move with different breathing and with um, different movements. If we move our head side to side, we're moving the throat chakra. Um, we're also using the throat chakra in a, a, a mudra, a hold. So mudra is a lock. So a hold of Jalandhara Bandha. But I'll get into that later, but I want to talk about Kapalabhati. It's the skull shining breath, and it has like so many great benefits. Um, it's called the breath of fire. It's really good for our third chakra, which is our solar plexus. And um, over the past few years, I've had five abdominal surgeries, and I've always worked on keeping my digestion strong. So you can imagine having five stomach surgeries and I still taught and did all these practices. And I really feel that yoga saved my life. If you're interested in anything I have to say tonight and you need some assistance, um, I coach and mentor people on their spiritual ascension and, you know, what's going on in your body because we can actually heal our body through these practices and I'm living proof of it. Okay. I always tell people when I was younger, I was 200 pounds. And once I began yoga, I realized how we can actually use these practices to become healthy and whole and alive and active. So creative whales, wellness, healing, ascension, love, energy and spirit. So yeah, so Kapalabhati. It's a purification breath actually that's used in um, something they called Panchakarma, one of the purification systems in yoga. There's six different uh, Panchakarmas. And um, this is one that you can do, which will help elevate your energy. So I do this practice in the morning Excuse me for a minute. I do this practice in the morning. I do about three rounds of 111 or 121. Um, I like 11, so I do 111 three times. And you build up to that. Because unless you've done the other practices I've been talking about, this can be a bit challenging. Um, it's also, like I said, it's really good for digestion. <clears throat> if you have a sluggish digestion, um, I've had I've had scar tissue removed from inside uh, twice, and uh, both of them were emergency surgery. So yeah, I've 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 had it. <laughs> so it also tones your diaphragm. And again, um, I learned all these things to help heal myself. Um, 
I didn't choose to go to uh, traditional medicine. Obviously, when I was rushed to the hospital um, about 12 years ago, I went to the hospital and they had to operate on me. But um, yeah, it tones your diaphragm and your intercostal muscles. Those are, those are the muscles around your rib cage and they actually do move. And it was very interesting when I was in the hospital uh, for my last surgery, when I got out, um, I was shallow breathing because they put you on a respirator and I was in ICU for, um, I think, first three days. And I remember, and I was teaching yoga, I had been teaching yoga about, um, I don't know, about eight years by then. So I really didn't have any symptoms. Um, but anyway, my 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 tops were a lot baggier because my intercostal muscles were so used to expanding and contracting and they had such a good um, range. And from not using them for so long, my, my, my rib cage shrunk. It was very interesting feeling. When you know your body well, you notice things about it. And that's another beauty of what I'm gonna be teaching you in um, the ABCs of creative healing. Um, how you can feel your body more. And my goal is to teach people how to feel their bodies. Um, I have a story I tell people. I used to ask some of my students, we'd be doing a pose or breathing. What do you feel? And they'd say, I don't know. And sometimes we feel what's happening in our car more than we feel our body. And I think we should learn to feel our body. It's the vehicle we drive in this lifetime, right? So. Keep your vehicle clean and running and healthy. So another great practice for Kapalabhati is it improves your circulation and it helps the body to heal itself naturally, right? Because you're giving the body more oxygen and you're like uh, pumping it up. Um, there is contraindications with um, Kapalabhati because it's an intermediate type of breath. Um, after you learn the, the prior breaths I talked about, that's when you would uh, begin to, I would begin to introduce Kapalabhati, skull shining breath, breath of fire to you, whatever you choose to call it. Um, you don't do it if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure. And um, if you're pregnant or have vertigo, you don't engage in it at all. And um, epilepsy. So those are some of the contraindications. Also, another huge one for any breathing practice, you all, is if it doesn't feel right, stop doing it and just return your breath to normal. So listen to your body all the time, okay? So we're here to learn what we feel and to be creative whales, healthy, wellness, all that good stuff. So um, it helps to strengthen your peace and your clarity. Yeah, that's really important these days. Clarity, what are you thinking? And again, I go back to what do you feel? Now, what do you think? What do you feel in your heart? The heart is the, the master system, I believe, for everything we do. We should always think with our heart first, not what's logical to do, what feels right, what's truth, what feels right to us. Some people get it in their gut, but always go to your heart. The heart is like a master system. So um, it also helps. It's a great practice to help clear um, energetic blocks, right? And again, I talked about the third chakra. That's your willpower. Your third chakra is the Manipura chakra. So this is a good breath to do before you eat. Don't do any, don't do this breath or um, any strenuous breathing practices when you have food in your stomach, okay? Because you wanna be clear. And when you're digesting your food, all the blood goes into your stomach. So um, there's certain ways you can sit, you know, in, in other countries, they sit with bent knees and their, uh, their sit bones on their heels. And that brings all the blood down into the lower portion of the body. And it helps digestion after uh, you've eaten a meal right? Because that's how a lot of people in other countries eat their meals, is uh, with bent knees sitting on their heels. All the digestion is being taken care of with the blood supply. So we do some strange things in the United States, but 
that's who we are. And then we learn these ancient things they've been doing for years and they've been healthy and they have people who live to be like a hundred, right? Um, I just heard about a lady, um, somebody I know's mom turning a hundred. So, um, and she's with it and she's, you know, so yeah, so there's lots of people out there um, living a good life and um, yeah, and doing healthy, natural things. So, so how to do Kapalabhati? So I'm going to explain it and we're going to do um, just a few rounds of it, if this is new for you. And again, I work with people privately on Zoom, teaching you breathing practices, um, helping you with your specific needs. Um, I work with a lot of people um, in, in their older years, 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, so I can help you out. I work with anybody, but that's my main focus. People going through these changes and um, ascension, um, ascension practices to help us gain greater clarity as we're moving into higher dimensions, because that's what we're doing. We're ascending and uh, keeping our body clean and clear of toxins. This is a great breath to do it. And we also do this breath um, to, to, to lead up to this breath. We do um, Nauli. So it helps to move the, uh, the stomach back and forth. So, and I show people that when I'm working with them privately on the Zoom calls. So, you're ready? I'm gonna do a little Kapalabhati. So as I explained in earlier uh, breathing practices, when you inhale, the body expands. Like a balloon expands when you fill it with air, right? And then when you exhale, it contracts. So in this case, the inhale happens automatically. But when you exhale, you snap your abdomen back and you make a little sound. So I'll get a little closer so you can hear. It sounds like this. So my abdomen is moving back. It will help strengthen the diaphragmatic muscles, like I said, but you're strengthening your abdominal wall. So imagine doing every morning doing three rounds of 111 because I like the angel numbers one 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 um when I was doing I when I was working um different places and when I was with a different uh yoga group I used to do 108 because 108 is a magic number like my website is art and soul 108 so you know somewhere up in there and if you do 11 times 11 it's 121 but we don't start there. We always start from where we are. And I always tell my students that, be where you are, not where you wanna be. You have a goal, right? We always have to have goals, but be where you are. And always challenge yourself. Don't be lazy, but challenge yourself a little. You know, don't, don't stay at like three rounds of 10 for like, a month, you know, you want to increase it by one, by one, by one. And I always recommend to my students, um, keep a journal, you know, keep a journal of what you, what you do. I hand, I, I give my students uh, journal sheets to fill out. Um, and I'll be doing that in my uh, 12 week course that I'm coming up with. So, and that'll be online and um, we'll have Zoom calls. And you'll learn all these practices we'll, and we'll have time for question and answer so we can interact. So I'm really excited about that, uh, helping people out and helping people get healthier, right? Creative whales. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to do three rounds of Kabbalah Bhati tonight. The first round is going to be 10, then 20, and then 40. Now, if you can't reach the number we're going to, you just stop, discontinue, and let your breath breathe in and out naturally. Never force. That's the most important thing in yoga. Always be comfortable, never force. So we're going to exhale fully, tuck the tummy back, 
You're going to inhale deeply. And I'll start with three, and then you begin for 10. Exhale fully, inhale deeply, and then just exhale slowly. So if you're feeling a little lightheaded, lightheaded, dizzy, or nauseous, just discontinue the practice because sometimes your body's not used to so much air, right? And this helps to clear out the mucous membranes you might have to blow your nose. We always have a box of tissues. Um, when I used to teach, we always used to have a box of tissues in the yoga studio. So it's always a good idea to blow your nose before you practice in the morning. So this is a good breath to start. Uh, there's a series of breaths I'll talk about before your meditation practice in the morning. And that helps to get you ready to sit in meditation. But for now, we'll do our second round of 20 and we will all begin together. So exhale fully. You're gonna inhale deeply and begin for 20. Exhale fully, inhale deeply. And exhale slowly through the nose. Notice how you feel. How you feeling? I brought my crystal ball out tonight. Taking some good energy for us. I love this crystal ball. Crystal quartz. So now if 20 was enough, you can just take yourself up to whatever number you feel you need to come up to. But if you can make it to 40 with me, let's do that. Okay. And only do what's comfortable. If you get lightheaded, dizzy, or nauseous, please discontinue the practice. And again, I gave the contraindications before. You don't do this with any um, heart ailments, high blood pressure. If you're pregnant, if you have vertigo or you have epilepsy. OK, or if you're if you just ate, you don't want to do this, as I said earlier, I'm just repeating. OK, so and that goes for just by the way, that goes for a lot of yoga poses. That um, there are certain contraindications for different poses and um, you should always if you don't feel right, always ask the teacher. And um, yeah, and that's why I only generally teach one on ones on Zoom so I can see what the person is doing. I uh, don't feel comfortable if I can't see my students. Uh, I wanna be able to help uh, give them a um, an indication of there's a safer way to do things or if they're doing something that is not um, gonna be comfortable for them, okay? So again, never strain and we're gonna begin. So we always exhale fully through the nose, inhale deeply. And we're gonna begin with 40. Exhale fully. And inhale deeply. And slowly release. How do you feel? Do you feel wide awake? So since I'm doing this practice, I'm recording this um, in the evening. I have another breathing practice that I do to bring myself to relaxation. It helps to... Um, activate the vagus nerve so I relax. And if you go back in my videos, it's the one to two ratio. 
So I, this is my practice. I inhale to 10 and I exhale to 20. So a one to two ratio, but if you can inhale to four and exhale to eight, that's perfectly fine. Be where you are, be comfortable, notice what you feel, because if you don't know what, you're, what you feel and you're just doing things because somebody asked you to, I don't think that's a really great way to go through the world. I think you should be able to feel. And that actually starts to activate your intuition. That's why these breathing practices are so important. So thank you so much for coming tonight. If you have any questions, if you'd like to book a private or if you'd like a, a free consultation with me, just check the links below and get in touch with me. Okay, I'd be more than happy to speak to you either via Zoom or via telephone. Shoot me an email or send me a private message on Facebook or Instagram. Or, um, yeah, all my information is going to be below. So have a great evening. I wish you all blessings, happiness, and most of all, a lot of fun. Have a lot of fun in life. Om Shanti. Namaste.